Marta? Marta? Oh, it's so ridiculous. You do not have to hide from your housekeeper. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you realize how hurt she'd be if she thought I preferred takeout to her cooking? Oh, that is absurd. Yeah, right, 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 right. Now, just go through the kitchen real casual. And then if you see any sign of her, just go, ooh-hoo, ooh-hoo. And she'll think what? That there's an owl in the kitchen? <laughs> right. But by then, I will have hidden the Chinese food. Oh, Dudley, you are such an idiot. And by the way, I'd like to point out that you were never this concerned about my feelings the whole time we were married. Well, I've grown, Lorraine, and uh, besides, Marta is a lot harder to replace. <laughs> Malas noticias, Mama. He terminado con Satana. Si lo amo, pero cómo puedo confiar en un hombre así? Es mejor terminar ahora. Me estoy destrozando el corazón. Todo lo que veo me recuerda a él. Este es el teléfono donde me. Shrimp Lemaine, that's yours. Who? Do you have something in the kitchen? No. I think you're paranoid. You know that? Marta wouldn't mind if you occasionally ate food that she didn't cook, you know. You don't know Marta like I do. I mean, she takes great pride in her cooking. In fact, she made an incredible enchilada casserole from an old family recipe. Unfortunately, she has a, an enormous family. <laughs> We've been eating it since Labor Day. <laughs> mm. yeah. Oh! Great. This all could have been avoided if you'd just done the owl thing. <laughs> Marta, it, it's not what you think, really. I mean, I, I had no intention of, of eating any of this. <laughs> you see, Lorraine, the woman is crushed. <laughs> what can we do? We face the inevitable. Um, Marta, Marta. Enchilada casseroles, all round. Si, senor. She lives to feed me. Pues ahora sí. No solo tengo mi corazoncito destrozado, sino tengo que hacerle comida a la gente que ya tiene comida. Gonna feel the way I do Album, Paul. What do you think? I guess. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, <laughs> before you answer, I want you to be totally objective. You're not my manager. You're not my accountant. You're not my best friend. I like it, Dudley. What do I care? You're a total stranger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When do I do my first interview to promote the album? Dudley, in your mind, what happens when you do an interview? Ah, uh, well, it's great fun. Um, I get to go and say whatever I want. Uh, they print it, and uh, lawsuits happen, and you take care of it. This, this time, lawsuits are not going to happen. No interviews until you make me a promise. All right, I promise. What is it? That you'll only talk about the album, that you will not discuss anything having to do with women, politics, real estate, dentists. Dentists? Oh, God, I hate 
dentist. <laughs> rinse and spit. Rinse and spit. Yes. <laughs> Santana, te dije que nunca vinieras aquí. Pero yo te amo. Y no puedo tolerar estar sin ti. Ya te dije, se acabó. Dame una razón. Dame una razón y dejaré de molestarte para siempre. Te detesto. No puedo tolerar ni verte. Dame otra razón. Bueno, y ya que insistes, um, hay alguien más. Mara, ¿es un problema? ¿Él? ¿Me dejaste por él? Well, the reporter's gonna be here any minute. I think the first thing you should talk to him about is... Paul, please stop badgering me. I know how to handle the press. Really? Yeah. Do I have to remind you about the all-night interview with the woman from the Tribune? <laughs> well, I mean, how was I to know she was a reporter? <laughs> the press pass, Dudley, the tape recorder, the photographer. <laughs> she tricked me, Paul. <laughs> Look, I want you just to remember what we talked about. Don't forget your promise. Paul, you're treating me like I'm a child. God. Oh, great. Look at this crust. Ugh. I think the general tone of this interview should be upbeat. Everything good. Everything positive. Right. Hi. Oh, hi. Mr. Bristol. Yes. I'm Russ Cameron from the Times. Right. Is this Paul Dagny? Hello. Hi. hi. How are you? <laughs> hi. Pleased yeah. to meet you. Um, I, I suppose you're anxious to talk about my new album. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. I, I have them all. I'm, I'm a big fan. Oh, well, thanks very much. Uh, I, I think it's my best work ever, actually. So, uh... Why did the producer quit in the middle? Um, oh, well, gosh, that isn't uh, a very upbeat question, is it, Russ? Yeah, well, nevertheless, why did he quit? Ah, uh, well, he was a complete... Dudley? A uh, man. <laughs> complete man, a man's man. What am I driving at here, Russ? Didn't the engineer quit, too? <laughs> Which one? I mean... <laughs> Right, we went, we went through, what was it, eight of them, Paul? Uh, and uh, each of them better than the last. Yeah. This is a minefield. Now, I understand your son recently came to live with you. Danger, uh, danger. <laughs> mm. Yes, yes, he did. And, and God, what a, what a blessing the little tyke is. <laughs> My sources say he's a troubled kid. Something about a stolen car. Mayday, uh. mayday, mayday. Well, Russ, I mean, you of all people should know that you can't believe everything you read. It was an arrest report. Uh, yeah, but I mean, totally biased. I mean... You know who writes those things? The police! Uh, why don't you tell Russ what Fred's like now? Are you insane? <laughs> I'm talking about the, uh, the upbeat parts. Oh, um, well, uh, Fred has never been convicted. <laughs> up, 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 up. Um, uh, well, Fred's not a bad kid at all. He's just sensitive, you know. I mean, God's sake, he, he, he still sleeps with his Mr. Bunny. <laughs> I heard he was out of control and you just couldn't handle it. Of course he's out of control. He's a teenager. Hormones, mood swings, skin problems, which doesn't help with the girls. And believe me, he could use a little help. I mean, he's terrified of them. He could use a little help with the girls. He's terrified of them. I, I can't help what my father says. The man is totally delusional. I know what you mean, Fred. My father is absolutely convinced that Oswald acted alone. <laughs> There's a little item we didn't know about, Fred. <laughs> no, you don't. Listen to this. He's not a bad kid. He's sensitive. Oh. Come here, Fred. Give us a hug. <laughs> Dudley, the radio station is going to be calling pretty soon. Uh, since this is a live interview, I've prepared a few answers that ought to keep you in safe territory. Yes, no, and obviously the woman is lying. <laughs> Hello? Oh. Ah. 
the Spanish man again. Um, really, my good hombre, uh, all this yelling isn't doing anyone any good. I, I can't understand a word you're saying. I think I'm the victim of a Mexican telemarketing scam. <laughs> Muerto? What is, what is that, some sort of magazine? <laughs> Doubly muerto means death in Spanish. Well, that's a horrible idea. Who'd want to subscribe to something like that? <laughs> hey, Fred, is that you? Don't talk to me. Fred is mad. <laughs> well, that's only because he's awake. <laughs> well, don't you think you ought to go upstairs and talk to him? <laughs> I've learned one thing about teenagers. You don't confront them when they're angry. You wait a while till they've got a wife and a mortgage, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, by then, they're too beaten down to hurt you. <laughs> Hello? What? What station? Live interview? <laughs> Hold on. It's for me! <laughs> no, he's not here right now, but um, this is his son? And I'd be glad to tell you all about him. Want to start with the hair plugs? <laughs> Don't worry about the interview, Paul. I know how to promote the album. Well, I'm reading the Times article, and I see your love life, your home life. I see no mention of the album. Forget that. I mean, may maybe they're playing some of the album before the interview. So you're saying Dudley Bristol, man about town, bon vivant, ladies' man extraordinaire. Hey, Someone this whose this life court. we really is all great. envy is so cheap, he goes to parties just to bring home free food and make long-distance phone calls. What? Uh, that's right, Jim. And you know Dudley Bristol's reputation for witty banter? Huh? He doesn't make that stuff up. He gets it out of this book he has. It's called, um, Funny Things for English People to Say. <laughs> that's Fred. My God, he's hijacked the interview. Fred, 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 Fred this, this is, this is, this Paul. is Paul. Hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up. Oh, my oh, God, God. Listen, 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 to listen, to that. That. listen, listen, I'm on the I'm radio. radio. It's me. <laughs> Hello, New York. <laughs> Dudley, I'm, I'm Simon, 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 Simon Cass. Cass. <laughs> For God's sake, Fred. Hi, Mom! <laughs> Fred! I'm not talking to you. Go away. Get off that radio and open the door! I better go. His medication is wearing off. <laughs> Paul! Paul! Are you still there? Are you still on the phone down there? Some enchanted evening. <laughs> you may see a strange you may see us and John Our crows are crowded room And there's something you'll know You'll know if you can I'm cheap, am I? <laughs> If it weren't so ridiculous, it'd be funny, but how would I know? I don't have my funny Englishman's handbook on me. <laughs> it's my first live interview, you know? I mean, what do you expect from me? I, I wondered what the hell you were thinking. God only knows what you said before I turned on the radio. Oh, no. <laughs> don't tell me you missed the part about the hair plugs. What? <laughs> Fred, that interview was supposed to be about my album. Which I may point out is probably the only secret this family has left. <laughs> Well, we'll just hope for the best. I mean, it was only one radio station. If I'm lucky, no one was listening. That's the happiest I've ever made her. <laughs> oh, no, no, not now. Uh, don't answer that, Paul. Oh. Bristol residence? Thank God he doesn't work in a missile silo. <laughs> Dudley, Dudley, it's Vanity Fair. They want to do an interview. Oh, great, they heard the album. No, they heard Fred. 
I think he's very candid, very fresh. They'd like to talk to him. Well, I'll tell them, sorry, but Fred has no comment. Also, no reasonable expectation of feeling sunlight on his skin before the 21st century. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Bristol residents. Look, you know, I'm not the one who started this. I mean, you're the one who told the New York Times about me and Mr. Bunny. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're right, Fred. I mean, the, the, the interview wasn't supposed to be about you. It somehow got away from me. Dudley, USA Today is on the phone. They're doing a celebrity parenting graph. Bill Cosby's at the high end, and you would be at the... You know, even as I say that, it sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> Lorraine, would you get line two? Anyway, Fred, I mean, re regardless of who started this, I don't think you're aware of the consequences that this oh, kind of thing can have on... Sally Jesse's on the phone, and she wants to know if she can reunite you and Fred on her show tomorrow. Lorraine. <laughs> That's a great idea. Put the ex-wife in charge of media relations. Uh, yes, that was me. It's from South Pacific, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, hold, hold on. Uh, Dudley, it's, it's uh, Channel 10 on the line. They, they want to do an interview with both of you. Tell them... Oh, uh, no, 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 I, I know what I'll do. Fred, if it's okay with you, we'll do one interview with Channel 10 at the club tomorrow and we'll just explain to them that there's nothing going on here, that it doesn't go on in any normal household with normal parents and normal children. Bristol residents. Fred, it's Cheyenne Brando. She, she just wants to talk. Hello? Dudley. Fred is late. I'm sure. And yet there may be another solution. Think about it. Fred's only been on the radio. Nobody knows what he looks like. Oh, okay. Paul, I should be out. <laughs> I've got a well-groomed young man standing outside. He's articulate, he's polite, and for 20 bucks he'll say whatever we want. Send him away, Paul. Eagle Scout, neckerchief, badges, whistle. Mr. Bristol, could you play a little something for us? Oh, I'd be delighted, of course, yeah. Absolutely. The more I see you, the more I want you somehow. Thank you. Th Thank you. <laughs> That's it? You, you don't want to hear the rest of it? Oh, I don't care. We were just checking the sound. <laughs> I, I, I thought you might want to include this in the interview. I mean, uh... <laughs> It's off the new album. I haven't heard anything about a new album. Uh, yep. It's kind of been our strategy so far. <laughs> the album is the reason I'm doing this. I mean, Fred and I are, are just going to tell the world we're getting along, and then I can get on with promoting my album. <laughs> Mr. Bristol, getting along is not news. You're expecting me to argue with my son on television? You expect me to go up against hard copy with some happy crap? <laughs> Fred, you're late. I overslept. But you came from school. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at you. Couldn't you couldn't you have dressed? Well, take Phil. I'm not changing the way I dress for an interview. Yeah, fine. Well, just just do whatever you Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> this is Rita Dunbar here at the world famous Liaisons Nightclub, covering day two of the public feud between Dudley Bristol and his son Fred. Thank you, Rita. Um, uh, this just in. Uh, <laughs> new development regarding the Bristol feud. There is none. I'm not on medication. Fred doesn't sleep with the bunny. <laughs> I mean, sure, we have our problems, but basically we're a normal, happy little family. Just a boy and his dad. Ahí estás, puerco! <laughs> and an incredibly furious Spanish man. Me robaste, mi amor! Y ahora tienes que sufrir como yo. What? What did he say? Oh! Fred, you've got to translate quicker. He said you stole his girlfriend. Is that true, Mr. Bristol? You stole that man's girlfriend? Well, if this is possible. I mean, who's his girlfriend? <laughs> Paul, fine now, and, and, and take her out of my Rolodex. <laughs> our housekeeper. Perfect. For God's sake, keep that thing going. <laughs> what you have just witnessed is a Channel 10 exclusive, the exposure of a steamy, illicit love triangle. 
centerpiece? <laughs> no surprise. Dudley Bristol. Hey, uh, uh, Miss Dunbar, before you turn that thing off, I would like at least to mention That's a rap. my <laughs> album. Me robaste, mi amor, y ahora tienes que sufrir como yo. What? Fred, what did he say? Ah! What? Fred, what did he say? Sadly, would you like something for your eye? Yeah, hand me a retina, would you? <laughs> Greetings, all. Well, Dudley, somebody finally mentioned the album. Great! Unfortunately, it was the record company. It was in reference to not releasing it. What? Why would they do that? Well, apparently they feel that uh, dysfunctional families and Latino love triangles aren't all that conducive to selling an album entitled Just an Old Fashioned Guy. <laughs> Good God, he's here to finish me off. Well, you're out of luck this time, buddy. I'm ready for you. Look, it's Julio Iglesias. <laughs> Disculpa, mi amigo. Eh, sobre reaccioné. Es el único hombre en mi vida que ha peleado por mí. Lo amo. <laughs> hey, they're back together, and, and she's really happy. Oh, oh, oh this wonderful congratulations. Yeah, really Allow me to oh, offer my warmest nice. congratulations. Hello! Yeah. Hello! Does anybody recall this man is a lunatic? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, no album? No, and if I may suggest, before we launch into any more projects, maybe you and Fred ought to get a few things straight. Like what? Like the publicity thing. I mean, Fred, you, I, I don't think you understand, but now you live with me, this is what it's going to be like. I, I, I think we have to be careful and respect each other's privacy. You know, living with a celebrity is like living under a microscope. When we were married, no matter how angry I got at your father, I would never in a million years ever talk to some reporter. This is Rita Dunbar. Join me tonight for an in-depth follow-up when we sit down and interview Dudley Bristol's ex-wife, Lorraine Bristol. <laughs> Of course, all bets are off. <laughs> Some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger, you may see a stranger. Across a crowded room, and someday you'll know, you'll know even you.